All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss, and today I am doing a little bit of an interview, a little bit different than we normally do here on the channel. Um, and I'm here with my buddy Carlos, Carlos Rivera. And Carlos is going to give us a little bit of lessons on some figs. We're going to talk to Carlos about figs and talk to him about his yard, his microclimate. We're going to talk about how an amazing job he's doing. Um, I got to spend some time this year uh, with Carlos at the Staten Island Fig Festival. Uh, that's actually where I met Carlos, by the way. So that's kind of our origin story is that many years ago, Carlos, how many years was it, do you think? About four years ago or so? About uh, around four, six, six years around there. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Me and him, we met at the, the Staten Island Fig Festival, and this is when it was prior venues and – and Carlos introduced himself, and he just, he was just a bag, he has a magnetic personality about him, and he is so passionate about figs. There are very few people that I've ever come across, and I don't even think I have the same passion level as Carlos. It's amazing. And so we're going to talk to him today. And uh, so, Carlos, I want you to kind of give a, give the people out there who don't really know anything about you, give, give them some information about yourself. Tell them little bit about yourself and then also you know what what's your setup like where do you live um all that all that kind of good stuff yeah well i mean um like we talked about the a uh, few times that we met up at the um the uh festival and um just i, I just i just do normal normal stuff like like every year you know um like I always say to myself, to um, for me to grow, not not disrespect to anyone, but for me to grow like Chicago Hardy and you know just the regular stuff is, it's too easy for me, you know. I like to, it's too I like, easy. I like a little challenge to get the. Uh, so to give people the, uh, a little bit of context, though, Carlos, is that you are in New Jersey, correct? And you're in. Uh, I'm in I'm in, uh, I'm in Roselle, New Jersey, uh, Zone Six B. Yeah. And Roselle is more north. It's like, uh, where is that in relation to New York City? Well, I'm, I'm about, yeah, a little north. I'm about 25, about 20 minutes from New York City, about 25 minutes uh, from New York City, yeah. Okay. And so when you're in Roselle, you're you're basically in a similar place to me. You're, you know, we, we don't live in the warmest place. We also have a 180 days roughly of, of no frost and so growing figs can be difficult, but for you, you're growing all these very longer to ripen varieties, right? They're quite late, but for you, the you seem to have this amazing green thumb, and so you're having really good success. So that's what you meant by that, right? I'm just having a great time, Rose. I mean, uh, just like just like you <laughs> say before. I mean, I I just uh, love growing figs. You know, I, I I love the challenge. I you know, it's a lot of work into it. You know. Gotcha. Um, it's not for the not for the lazy guy. This this growing fig thing in the North East. So you got you got to have the time. You got to have the passion, the passion to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, um, I also hang water my trees and stuff. So I mean, I believe I put some uh, videos up there for the people because I want everybody to learn. You know, I want everybody to to um, to learn how I do it. And um, hopefully, uh, starting next year after they they um. They watch this video, you know, and uh, hopefully they get a they get a lot of stuff to grow to to ripen here because um, one thing that I know is that I mean you could have a lot of trees, but if you don't get the stuff to ripen, you know, it doesn't make sense to have hundred two three hundred you know trees and and um, I do have yeah I do have you know <laughs> I do have few trees. And, uh, yeah, I, I get stuff to ripen, you know. Um, so, Carlos, for those, again, they don't know Carlos, is that Carlos is, he's in Roselle, but he's growing a lot of fig trees in containers. Do, do you have any of them in the ground? I only have a few in ground, Rose. I only have, uh, let me see, I have, uh, uh, I have Negroni, Carlos Unknown, 2nd Avenue, and um, I do have uh, Desert King. Okay. And I have, uh, and I have another one, uh, Violet de Bordeaux, I believe, as a French French fake. And uh, I do get fakes. I get I get fakes every year, but you know they like kind of away from me. You know they run, you know, they they like in the front of the house, so the squirrels usually eat them eat them when they get ripened. Gotcha. Uh, and so do, do they? Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, do they compete at all with the, the potted figs? Do you prefer the potted 
container figs or do you like the in-ground figs? Well, I mean, I... <sighs> I, I love potting. I, I love I love the potting figs because I can move them around, you know, and also um, because of the short season that we have. Of course, we have uh, I mean, tops what three and a half months, not even four months to grow, you know. Right. And uh, when I when I got them in pots, I mean, I have a lot of a lot of trees in pots. I can always control the, you know, the 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 water, the the fertilizer. I, you know, I I control that better, you know. And, so. Uh, you were you were kind of before almost leading into it, um, you know, talking about the hand watering, talking about how this isn't really for the faint of heart, right? You really got to put some effort in if you're going to grow figs and grow figs well, not just grow a f- bunch of trees, but to ripen the fruits, you got to be really kind of skilled. So what are, what are some of the things, if you could narrow it down to one thing that you would tell someone who's new at this? You know, and you have your friend. Is your friend Alex who does some of the videos with you? Yeah, my buddy, uh, my buddy Alex. Yeah, he does. Um, he does. Um, he does videos. Yeah, we did a couple of videos this year. Matter of fact, um, he's uh, he's he's new growing fakes, You know, he's new and uh, and. Uh, so what's you know, the I, one I, thing? I... Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Carlos. But what's the one ahead, thing that you think that Carlos, starting off, or someone like Carlos, ought to know about growing figs? in New Jersey or in the Northeast? Well, uh, don't end up with a couple of hundred trees. So, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, I would, you know, I would, I would, you know, take it easy, you know, take your time, you know, just, you know, you know, take, you know, just take, you know, two at a time, see what's best for you out there. Because that's how I started. You know, I started with, um, I started with a Chicago hottie, you know, and I and I uh, and I tasted it, and I say, oh wow, this is good. And then uh, I started buying more stuff, and I started finding out there was more fix out there. I think we we'll talk about this, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll tell someone the first time I said, look, just you know, get a regular tree, you know, get it, you know, Italian honey, you know, early, early fig, uh, get yourself into it, taste it, and uh, and see, you know, see how that goes because, I mean. Also, guys do make a lot of mistakes because if you have a tree that is a couple of years old and you're going to keep it in a three-gallon pot, that's just not going to work, you know. I mean, the bigger the, the bigger the tree gets, the bigger the, bigger the pot you, you you know you have to use. And you know, um, yeah, I mean, I just tell them to take it easy, just take your time, and I and I tell them like I told my friends, I told everybody like the way I the way I grow them, you know, the way I grow figs, and uh, it's a lot of work. You know, you say yourself is a lot of work. Uh, I work in the city. I work in New York City for many years. And um, before I go, I got to water my trees. After I come home, I got to water my trees. So I just, I spend a lot of time in the yard, you know. Yeah. I uh, yeah. spend a lot of time, yeah. Yeah, you love what you do, and, and it's obvious, um, which is why I, I find that you have such an amazing magnetic passion for all of this. Um, so, Carlos, what are some of the things then you, you talk – we asked you about the beginners and it makes a lot of sense because I, I always preach the same thing. Um, but for the experts, for the people who are experts, right. And I'm saying this in quotes, right. Yeah, people yeah. who really know what they're doing or have been doing this for a while. What are some of the things that you think would really help because you, and I, I know this for sure. You, you don't have any sort of greenhouse head start, right? You, you bring them up out of your shed. You have them in containers. They're in your garage. Um, most of them are in your garage, correct? And there's another location. That's I forget right. the other. The other. What's the other location you got them in? Well, I got a little shed that I feel about maybe um, maybe eight to ten figs inside okay. there. But those those are outside. Those are not inside the garage. No. Okay, so the shed in the garage, and and what you do is you bring them out by what date? I usually bring them out um, late. I would say the second or the third. The the. Like April twenty, April fifteen, my fix has got to be out. Everything has to be out. And your your last frost is what May first, May fifteenth. I would say, I would say May May fifteen around there. Yeah, I would say May. You know, they, and sometimes we get lucky too. You know, I mean, sometimes so we get lucky. Some yeah, go ahead. Well, you're bringing them out because you know there's a huge benefit to get them out early, right? What is the, what do you think that is? Well. You see, the thing is that, I mean, when I put my fix in the garage, I usually put them where they already dormant. 
And mm -hmm. uh, my garage door has two, uh, four windows. And when they go dormant, I usually seal those windows. I make sure they stay dark because I want those trees to stay dark, to, to be dormant, to light, like, not, I don't want those trees to wake up. So what I do is, uh, I would say the last week of February, I start, you know, open up those windows, uh, get that sunlight, get that daylight in there. So the trees uh, start waking up a little by little. So, um, I mean, the the second, the third week of uh, of April, my trees started, you know, waking up already. And right. uh, a few trees um, in the garage, they start waking up already, you know. And uh, that's, uh, you know, it's just, the, the trick of, the, the point is to give them that little push because if you don't get if you don't give them that extra push you're gonna have a hard time getting those figs to ripen special pond stuff you know uh, especially the you know like the black madeiras i-258 i mean i get i-258 uh like you know brevas the second week of july the third week of july i'm getting brevas and you know and uh black madeiras this year i had it um I, I started getting black madeiras. I believe the first one was uh, August nine, I believe. And, and this uh, is a main crop. No, this is this is a uh, 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 yes main crop of uh, of uh, black madeiras. I two fifty eight. That's a uh, that's uh, that's brevas, yeah. And uh, okay. because remember, uh, black madeiras, you don't get it. You don't you don't get brevas out of that tree. You only get main crop. So mm -hmm. I, like I say, I give them I give them that extra push, you know. I don't use no grow light in the garage. I don't. I never. I never grow. Uh, I never use grow light. I just go. Just go by sense. You know, when you do it every year, you know, you you know, you keep using the same routine, and and everything uh, uh, comes to a you know comes to a place. So, so Carlos, this is a really important point because you know this is why I think you're you got you got such a good green thumb with all of this because you're get like, I don't know if anyone just caught that, but you are ripening black Madeira figs, main crop. That's the, that's the second crop that fruits on the new growth. You're getting right. that by August 9th, which, Correct. which here in the Northeast is to put it lightly. It's insane. That's amazing because for me, when I, have a black Madeira and I actually put them, I used to have a black Madeira in a container and I would put it in the greenhouse. The earliest I could get black Madeira was about September 1st. So what you're doing, there's value in this. And that's why we're, we're trying to figure out all the little details so that people can understand exactly what the difference is. And so, all right, we're going to continue, right? So you bring them out in the middle of uh, the middle of April and you want to make sure you give them as much heat, as much of a head start. Like you don't, you want to make sure that they're getting all the sunlight and all the heat that they can. Because if they're in their in the garage, they're kind of just sitting there and nothing's really happening, right? Well, I mean, when I when I I make sure that when I bring my, my trees out uh, to the yard and stuff, I I make sure they already started waking up. I make right. sure that the, the you know, baby leaves started forming in the trees. I make sure that that tree started waking up. If the tree does, it's not, it's not waking up yet. I just leave it in the garage, open up the windows, and make sure. You see, I don't take trees when they dormant out. I don't do that because when you take trees uh, when they still dormant out, and you have like three, four days of a nice sunny days, nice temperature, and then. They start growing a little bit. They start coming out with the with you know with the baby leaves, and then five days later you get it cold night. You get thirty two degrees, twenty nine degrees, and then all that new growth just dies back. And all you do is you just pushing that that new uh, new growth like two weeks backwards. You know what I'm saying? And and um, I just make sure that every tree that wakes up. I, I always get them out of the yard. I, I get everything going in, um, in my yard and just make sure they get the sun, um, you know, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I do it. Every, like, like I, like I say, I, I don't, I don't get no trees uh, to the yard uh, that are not uh, uh, awake yet. I always get the, the trees that started waking up. So this way they not, they wake up naturally. Yeah. So you're you're also, by the way, I heard you say this, you're feeding them before you put them in the in the garage. So before they Correct. even go in in the wintertime, 
you're giving them a dose of fertilizer. And you're doing that, you think, because you need to make sure there's enough nutrients in the soil so that when they wake up, they got food, right? You said Correct. if you're going to be sleeping, you got to make sure that when you wake up, you got to have some food right away. That's right. Correct. And I, I do the same exact thing. Um, I give them some slow release before I put my trees away in the greenhouse because the second they wake up in that greenhouse, which is typically early March, then I have a you know a problem because I can't even feed my trees even if I wanted to. They're all stacked up on top of each other. So I got to feed them before I even put them in there. Otherwise, they're going to be hungry. So the next thing you do, by the way, after they get out, then what? Are you watering them? Are you feeding them right away? You're making sure, obviously, that they don't get hit by a frost. You don't want them to get hit by 32 degrees, you just said. But what are the That's other right. things? What are the other things you're doing right then and there? Well, I mean, when I take them out, remember, we're getting a lot of rain. We're getting cool nights. We're getting cool days. We're still getting a lot of rain. So I don't really bother, you know, of course, when I take them out and make sure I give them that little bit of water that they need to start waking up. But uh, uh, what you might call it, uh, um, that time, like 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 the second, third week of April, you know, you're getting a lot of rain here, like, you know, every four days, every sometimes it rains for two, three days because they call it April showers, of course. That's when the flowers, you know, start coming out. And uh, the other thing is, um, after that, uh, because I usually put fertilizer September, I would say the second week of September, you know, they, they still, you know, giving you fruits, of course. Um, and, and my next um, uh, fertilizer feed will be uh, um, around the second week of, uh, of May. This way, when they um, when the trees are awake already in May, they get an extra push. Because remember, when the trees wake up, they already have the fertilizer in there. So the roots is like, oh wow, I got food. You know, I need to grow. That's how I that's how I see it. Right. And the next uh, the next one because I use a, I use a miracle a miracle grow fertilizer. You know, I I don't use anything else. I don't I don't use no fish uh, thing. I don't use anything else. I've been using the same thing for, you know, for years. And it works for me. It works great. And uh, the other one is um, uh, the second week of July. I give them the, the third the third uh, uh, fertilizer because I don't like to touch them the month of August because I believe that if you disturb the roots, it, you know, you might, the, the, the tree might get a little stressed a little bit. So I don't, the whole month of, uh, of August, I don't, I don't put no fertilizer. Continue giving them that water is why they're getting, you know, what they need. And another thing is that um, I just want to put it out there. You know, me and you talk about this. I My, my climate is uh, like I'm getting 10, 11 hours sun here. So I'm getting a lot of sun here. Mm -hmm. It's not like, uh, you know, I keep my trees in the shade. They get seven hours. And then, you know, that's it for the whole day. And I'm getting from like 7, 7.15, from 7.30 in the morning to around 7 o'clock. So it's like like sunny all day and they get in the sun and um and like like i tell you before they just love the sun they love the heat fix love the heat so yeah that's that's what i do and i usually do it every year and it works for me you know and um and that's carlos that's pretty much it right there's no real other secret i mean you you, you basically you fertilize on a schedule you water twice a day but here's the big money ticket, right? Yeah, usually, I usually the water them once a day. Once a day when when it does. Because let's say if if I come home from, from work today, for example, right? Yeah. And uh, and it's going to rain tomorrow. I mm -hmm. don't put water today in my trees because they're going to get that rain tomorrow. Right. So why put water when, you know, when they're going to get water tomorrow? It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So depending on the rain, you may water once, you may water twice a day. But that's you're always making you, – and you're hand-watering, too. You're not using a drip. You're not using a spot spitter. You're not using a soaker hose. You are a, you are literally every tree by hand determining how much water every single tree needs and giving that tree that water. That's right. But other than that, Carlos, the main point, really, of what you're saying is that you have so much heat and you have a lot of sun. And, of course, with the sun, right, comes all this heat. So the, the sun obviously is a heat source, but you also, by the way, I've seen videos and pictures of your backyard. 
you know, you are surrounded by concrete, right? Isn't there, there's buildings and there's, you know, even your whole backyard, right? Is mostly concrete and stone and stuff on the ground? Well, uh, the building behind my house is, uh, is a second story building, which is, you know, solid concrete. And uh, my house is solid concrete in the back. And I also have the floor, the patio is full of, you know, it's concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, where I put my um, my fig trees, I put them on top of the black turf, you know, the black turf that, you know, you put, you know, the wheat, uh, whatever they call it, the wheat block. And um, I usually put the trees in there. And right. what the, the black turf does, it creates a lot of heat. You'll be surprised how much heat that thing, you know, uh, uh, um, gives to the, and, and also that thing is giving, is giving the pots a lot of heat. Plus the pots keep a lot of heat in them because I'm going to, I'm going to tell you one thing and you know, you, you know, you grow them for years. If you go at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and you touch that pot, you just touch it from the outside. Rose, that, that, those pots get really hot, man. They get really hot. And if you don't put water the same day that those pots get really hot, the trees is going to be really stressed out because I seen, um, I seen guys that they have a, you know, tree in a pot and, and they, they told me like, oh no, man, you're wrong. You know, you, that's not the way you do it, blah, blah, blah. And I say, okay, you know, listen, I, I do it that way and it works for me. They given this tree, Rose, they're giving this tree water every four days. And that tree is in a pot. And guess what's going to happen? They will, they, they will never get fruit because what happens is every time the little fruit starts, starts forming and you don't give that tree, you know, water, the tree is going to go through a, through a stress. And then what's going to happen is it's going to drop those little fruits and it's mm -hmm. going to start over again, over again every seven days and you're not going to be able to get fruit because right. it's going to drop it's going to drop those baby figs remember when the baby figs start forming they need nutrients they need fertilizer they need water they need good soil and another thing is like i make a video you know i always use wood chips in my soil mm -hmm. because wood chips has got it's got some kind of some kind of uh, um fungus they the roots really love that like you know, the, the the wood chips when when they become when they become soiled inside the pot, it, it they uh they uh, attract the earthworms they call it the, you know like from the ground whatever the earthworm, and that stuff um is is the wood chips is just become soiled and it's very good for the roots. It really it, it really is. It's it's at least a little things that that you do that it makes it makes sense. And when you do it for years, you know you just keep doing it. You know, you just keep doing it. I mean, you see, you see my results. I mean, I told people like a lot of people ask me like, "Oh my God, how you do it?" I said, "Look, I, I'm, you know, I'm making videos. I'm, I'm trying to show people the way I do it because that will make me happy. You know, I will make, mm -hmm. I will make me very happy to see a, um, to see a guy that has 20 trees and be like, "Wow, Carlos, you know, I'm doing the same thing you're doing, and wow, man, I'm getting a lot of stuff. That will make me happy, you know." And uh, yeah, that's you know. Nothing, it's... nothing special. Just keep doing the same thing every year, you know. <laughs> so it, it is truly amazing, though, because, like I said, I, if I get my black Madeira head start, um, and it's in the greenhouse in March, it's waking up and it's forming fruit probably even sometime in the middle of April, main crop. Uh, I won't get that fruit to ripen until about September first, and so. It's, you know, but my yard, here's the key, though, is that my yard, I don't get a lot of light. I have these big shade trees in the backyard. I'm sure you've seen some of the videos. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And so even right now, I mean, around September 15th, but right now there's almost zero light on my patio. My my patio at this time of the year gets no light. And so it is, it's really sad. It's really gotten me kind of depressed because every year <laughs> the trees get bigger and bigger. And as the season progresses past the summer solstice, right, past June, well, the, the sun is lower in the sky every day. So the combination of the trees getting bigger and the sun getting lower, eventually I get no light. And so that's what I'm dealing with right now. And I, I am just very envious of what you have over there with all that sunlight and all that heat and that black plastic you said. It all adds up because that's all I ever try to preach on this channel is about the heat. 
is about the sun. And the sun is so critical for even setting the fruits. You know, you don't know how lucky you got it sometimes because I even struggle sometimes to even get fruits to form. Because if you don't have the right amount of light for every specific variety, you won't even get fruits. Not That's only will right. you not get fruits, but something, and this is why I'm, I really wanted to bring you on and talk about this, is because it seems like to me, and I don't know, understand, I don't fully understand it, but it seems like all that sunlight, all that photosynthesis that your trees get more than mine is somehow speeding up all that ripening. Now, is it the photosynthesis or is it the heat? You know, is it just the fact that if you touch the side of your pots during the day in the summer, it's really hot? Now, I have a confession to make because my potted trees are so close together, I don't get a ton of light. That doesn't always happen during the summer. The sides of my pots are really not as hot as probably yours. Like, I'm sure if I took the temperature of my soil and compared the temperature of your soil, it would be a pretty big difference in August, in July, even in May. So, and all these things exponentially, right? That's a really important mathematical word. These exponential changes, these things add up. So one thing that you do in April, right, when you bring your trees out, one thing you do in May, one thing you do in June, all of that adds up over time and makes it exponentially at the end, at greater. At the end of the year, that's right. Makes it greater and greater. So by the end of the season, you get all the fruits of your labor. You get all the success of everything you did. And so that's really what I want to somehow explore because there's a huge difference between your yard and my yard. And so – I don't know what it is. What do you think it is? Do you think it's more about the sun or do you think it's about the you think it's about photosynthesis, excuse me, or do you think it's about the heat that the sun brings? I mean, if you it's, it's, it, best, it has to be the sun. It, ha, it has to be the sunlight because I I have, you know, this year God willing I, I want you to come to my yard. Mm -hmm. I want you to come to my yard this next year coming in and you're going to and you're going to feel it and you're going to be like, wow, because I do have, you know, I don't, I don't really bring anyone to my house. I'm going to be very honest with you because I'm kind of private. I close, I got dogs. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't bring anybody, uh, anyone home, but you, you welcome. I got friends of mine that come in and let me tell you when my friends, when, when my friend Alice was here and I have other couple of friends that they've been in my yard at 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning. They can't, they can't take the heat back there because I'm getting so much sun. Uh -huh. They remember that heat gets trapped in that area because the pots are giving you heat. The, the, the black turf, whatever they call it, is giving you heat. The brick building is giving you heat. The concrete floors that I have in the backyard is giving. So everything you see around is heat. Mm -hmm. And all that heat just gets trapped in that. I... I can't go back there and, and put water at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and spend an hour putting water. I can't, I can't do it. I passed out. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's, it's, it, it, the, that area back there, it gets, it gets very hot, uh, uh, Rose. And, and uh, I, I believe that what you're saying is that you're losing a little bit of uh, uh, sunlight uh, in your uh, yard. That, that that makes that, that that what you would call it makes a lot of uh, a lot of difference. It makes it makes big big time difference because if you're gonna get sunlight from let's let's say nine o'clock to two o'clock, and then from two o'clock you're gonna lose that sunlight from two o'clock to like five o'clock. Remember those two three hours, those parts are gonna start getting a little cold again. Mm -hmm. And that's not my case. My case is that when I get the sun, the sun stays in my yard. And it stays for 10, 11 hours, especially like in July and August. You know, you, we got like longer days. We have like, you know, longer, you know, uh, uh, daylight. And, uh, and, and yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the key, man. That's the key. You just got it. But also there's a lot of tricks in the game too, you know, because I know guys that they have 10, 12 house sun and, and they can't, they can't get stuff. And like wow. I say, the, the fertilizer has a lot to do. Uh, water in your trees. Don't overwater your trees because if you overwater your trees, you know that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how much water, how much fertilizer, what kind of soil you, you everything become in place. You know, and also another thing, you know, I watch your videos for many years. My trees has to be pinched before June. 
I always pinch my trees before June. 90, so, 95% of my trees, they have to be pinched before June. Now, if I see a little face, a little fruit forming in the branches, I don't have to pinch the tree because it's already, you know, fruit forming in the branches. So there's no need for me to, to, to pinch that tree. And another thing is, if I see baby figs before June, I guarantee you that I'm going to get fruit way before before September. Because remember, those fruit already been forming that little, and those little branches, and they just keep going to grow and growing and growing because the, the, the idea is there. They're putting, you know, putting water every day, giving that fertilizer three times a year, keeping the soil, you know, never let the soil get dry. Always keep it not wet, wet, but always moister, you know. So this and, brings uh, us to um, two other things I think are really important. I'm glad you mentioned the pinching because I didn't know that you did that. Um, I'm happy to hear you say that because, uh, you know, I've been on the fence in the last couple of years about whether or not I should or shouldn't pinch. And so there's been, uh, you know, a lot of learning that I wanted to do because I always did pinching. And then I wanted to make sure that by not pinching that I was actually doing the right thing, right? It's easy to be stuck in your ways and convinced that this is the right way. If you do something the opposite or if you make a mistake on purpose, then you can learn and really know if that's the truth, right? If that's really the right thing that you should be doing. And so that's right. I'm glad to hear you say that. Now, when I pinch in the past, I have typically pinched – uh, most of my pinching by June 15th. Um, most of my trees don't typically have the fruits that form right away around June 1st. So I have to maybe wait a little bit of time. Uh, if I'm lucky, I'll start pinching maybe the middle of May or, th or the last week of May, and that's the best time. So to hear you say that, that's great, because then you should be getting figs if you're pinching at the end of May, let's say, um, you should definitely be getting figs at least by early August. Are now are you getting main are you getting main crop in July? Well, main crop depends what kind of uh uh, uh I, I do get hundred percent I get brevets in yeah. July, like the second week of July. Mm -hmm. You know, um if I got an early an early fig up there I can I usually get, you know, uh, fruit uh late July. Well, most of my fruits start, you know, are ripe, and I would say that, you know, the first week of, of August, the second week of um, of August, the third week of, of August is, is is crazy up there because I, I tell you how much figs I get to ripen. I give figs to my friends, like, every week, and I'm talking about 100 figs in bags, you know, because I work in the city, you know, I, you know, and uh, I give them, like, every week I bring bags full of, you know, figs, you know. And because I, I mean, I can't, I eat like 20 figs a day, you know, like 15, 20 figs a day. And, um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I usually do. I always pinch my trees. Yeah. That's very, that's very important. Pinching the trees. I mean, it doesn't make sense. You pinching the tree when you already have fruit forming, like I mentioned before, because there's no need for that, you know? Right. And another thing is, like you say, you pinching your trees the second week of uh, May, you say? Like the, the the last week of May or the beginning of June. And uh, nowadays, my my figs, when I don't pinch them this year and the and the prior years that I haven't done it, the figs don't really form until the middle of June. I don't even see them really on my trees until the middle of June. Yeah, I think I think that I think you lose in that, that extra that extra uh, grow because of the light. Yeah. Because I tell you, the, the the sunlight, and I and I mean it, the sunlight makes means 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 way different, bro. It's like uh -huh. if you if you get in if you get in sunlight for seven hours, and I'm getting sunlight for 10, 11 hours, it's mm -hmm. a big difference. It's All right, let a me huge huge difference. Let me ask you this, Carlos. So after you pinch, do your figs grow? Well, they they do grow. I, I, because you see, if I have four branches, for example, mm -hmm. and I need to pinch two branches because they they are you know bigger than the other, they longer than the other one. They got like maybe eight inches of new growth, and yeah. the other one's got two three inches of new growth. I don't touch those. Mm -hmm. I only touch the ones that have the bigger growth. 
But for some reason, fig trees send the signal to every branch. And I noticed for years, when you pinch those two branches, those two branches are sending signals to those little branches. It's time for you to 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 make fakes, buddy. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's time for you to and they start like making fakes. I have trees that my friend Alice made videos, I would say maybe the last week of July or the second week of July. They are loaded. They just loaded of fakes, you know. Wow. And uh wow. and yeah, and and the and the reason is because of the pinching, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't get me wrong, I try to pinch those those branches, they already have eight inches of growth because yeah. they want to get you know, growing their little branches, but they don't, they don't, it gave me that grow. I'm getting that extra grow, but also I'm getting a lot of fruits. So Carlos, so, uh, this is my last thing, because before we wrap this up, I, there's one important thing we didn't talk about. And I think it, it's just as important as all the other things we mentioned. And so do you prune your container fig trees every year? I don't, I don't prune my, my trees, no. I don't prune. And I only cut. I only cut my trees. Let's say if I got a branch, you know, I I, I prune my trees to give my trees form, mm -hmm. to make the tree, you know, look good. The way I say, it. because if I have a branch going sideways, I say, you know what, I gotta cut it. And sometimes I cut and I sell those two cuttings. I, you know, I because just for, you know, I, I I you know people out there, I I sell few cuttings. I'm not gonna lie because I need that soil. You know, soil is very expensive. It's not you know. Oh, but I never, I never prune my trees unless rows my trees, you know, 12, 15 feet high. Of course, I got to give that tree form because I like to keep that tree, you know, where I could, you know, carry and put it in the garage, put it anywhere I want. Because I, I, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really prune trees unless I have to. So what happens, Carlos, when you prune your trees too much? Well, when when you prune your trees too much, they they just keep growing even <laughs> even harder. You know, it's 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 a fact. When you when you cut a tree, when you cut a branch, for example, I always cut a branch about three quarters of an inch from the main trunk, from the main from the main uh, uh, trunk. I call it. Never cut it less than three than, than three inches because you might lose you might lose that if that if that little gap gets you know gets uh, dry whatever you might lose the branch and I always cut it like three three quarters of an inch so this way I get that extra growth and sometimes I get four branches of that cutting because I I do it for a reason because I want more branches to grow from that from that a uh, 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 piece that I cut but I want those branches to grow the way I want them to grow. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to you? Yeah, so I, my theory on why we, we shouldn't be pinching, or I'm sorry, shouldn't be pruning is about the the buds themselves. So when you remove the tips and when you remove the lateral buds right below the tips, there's a lot of energy in those buds. And those, I, I really believe, have an easier time fruiting. I think they produce better fruit and they produce earlier fruit. And when you cut off all those tips, you're losing out on that. You're losing out on that energy. The tree then has to, when you cut the branch back and you lose all those buds, the tree is then going to respond because the hormones have changed in the tree. And you're now going to have a tree that wants to grow and is less likely to fruit. It's just all about the hormones. And then, of course, on top of that, you lose those buds. And when you lose those really strong energy in those buds, well, then the tree has to work harder to put out new growth and thicker growth and more leaves to then produce the fruits that that particular season. So, those that's my personal opinion. Can, yeah. Can I can I cut you off? Yeah. You see, that's how I control my growth, though. Yeah. Because when I when let's say for example, I have a I have a tree that is a seven feet tall, and I pinch that tree. I'm controlling the growth of that tree because I don't want that tree to grow. Mm -hmm. But most of the times when you pinch your trees, they're concentrating and fruiting for you, and the growth stays almost the same. They grow maybe like 10 inches the most, but I don't want that growth. I don't want I don't want my tree to grow, let's say, you know, five you know feet every year. I don't want that. And that's the way how I control my tree by pinching them. I know I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And it makes sense too, but that's how I control my growth, you know. That's yes. The way I do it. So that's called so, summer pruning. You know, they, people don't people don't realize this, but 
you know, pinching is just summer pruning. There is no other way to say it. We call it pinching in, in the fig world because we just remove the tip with our thumbs and we pinch it off. But in reality, we do this to every single every single fruit tree I grow. And I don't know, Carlos, if you're growing other – I think you have a couple persimmons, right? Don't you have a couple other fruit trees? I uh, – well, Persimmons I don't really touch. I just I just cut the branches. We, they grow in, you know, like – like crazy, I, I I usually I usually cut those branches off to give the tree form, of course. Yeah. Well, I think the same thing. I did my I did a lot of summer pruning this year on my persimmons, and I think it's really going to pay off next year. I'll let I'll let you know, but I. Oh yeah. It's it's without a doubt with all with all fruit trees. It's not just figs. Summer pruning changes the hormones to help them fruit. It helps control the size. And then, of course, if you do the opposite, you do the the winter pruning, which is what most people do and they take a lot of cuttings, that's only encouraging the tree to grow and not actually fruit. And therefore, that's right. that's you know, right. with all these different changes in the hormones and, and all these different things related to, to pruning, this has got to also be adding into the fact that you're getting main crop as early as you are. And so I want to thank everybody here for watching. This has been, a, I hope, a really eye-opening experience and lesson for everybody out there because – I'm telling you, Carlos is, is just doing amazing things. He's getting these varieties like Black Madeira to ripen main crop at a ridiculous time of the year. And so we sh really should be paying attention to the lessons that Carlos has to offer. And so I'm happy that I was able to interview Carlos. I'm happy that he's also a good friend of mine. I'm happy that he's doing so well. He's enjoying his figs, and he's trying to spread the passion of what he's doing to other people. So, uh, Carlos, by the way... Your friend Alex, what his what's his YouTube channel called? Uh, well, uh, if the, uh, Don, Don Sahomas. If you go to Don Sahomas uh, YouTube it, and and it pop, I, I'll tell him to send you the link. It's, okay, it's not a problem. I'll put that down in the uh, description. And if Carlos, if you want to plug anything else, you want to say anything else to the audience, be my guest. You know, just you know, just listen. I'm 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 living the dream, man. This is just you know, this is. This is this is my habit, and I'm loving. And I love it. You know, I could have a crazy day at work, and then when I get home, I see my trees. It's like everything goes through through the rooftop. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's a it's a beautiful experience. I I tell everybody just get into it, grow figs, man. It's great for you, best fruit and you know best thing in the world, man. And uh, it's just you know you just gotta be uh, positive. You know, it's a it's a lot of negativity out there, but you know I try to make it you know. Uh, uh, just be happy, you know, grow figs, get them to ripen, talk about it, you know, smile about it, talk to your friends. Oh, man, I got this, you know, yeah, just, just be happy and get yourself into it. You know, it's not, you know, if you have any, any, um, any questions, I do have my own, uh, my own, uh, um, my own group. Uh, the name is, uh, um, uh, forget about it. If, if you guys wanted to send me, uh, uh, you know, just, just check out my group, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, just send me something so I could let you. Uh, I could let you uh, join the group. You know, uh, it's a group that the me and uh, me and a couple of bodies of mine would decide to open up just to just to tell people out there. You know, um, you know, if they have any questions, they can always ask me or ask my buddies. You know, they mm -hmm. sometimes I don't get back to them in like a day or two because I'm I'm, I'm busy. So, mm -hmm. but you know, one of us will get in you know in touch with them. And uh, the name of the fake is forget about it. And uh, yeah, you know, just. Just live the dream and have fun, you know? All right, man. Uh, I'll put that link also in the description, by the way. And uh, so, yeah, thanks again, Carlos. For everybody else out there, please hit that subscribe button. I can't wait to do more of these interviews with other people, so stay tuned for that. And check out our blog, figboss.com. Take care, everybody. We'll see you for the next one.